Wednesday the 11th of August and I know I keep saying it but where is the time going? It is just flying by. So my thought for today is about highlights and I thought well the first thing that comes to my mind when I say the word highlights well is my hair uh, because normally every so often uh, when I'm getting my roots done I get some highlights put in as well especially in the winter time to brighten it up a bit. So, but highlights, what's been happening in this year of 2021? Well, the biggest highlight for me at this point is the Olympics. Now, I'm not a sporting person in any shape or form. I watch Formula One, I like a bit of ice skating, but probably it wouldn't bother me not to see any other sports on television. However, the Olympics is something completely different. I just love the Olympics. I could watch it, um, you know, I was watching it at breakfast and at lunchtime I would catch up again. And if I wasn't doing anything, you know, on a Saturday morning, well, I had it on as well, watching it. Uh, I just love the Olympics. I think it's the fact that these athletes train uh, for four years to be at their peak condition for the Olympics. Four years, that's a long time just to be the best of the best. But it's the dedication they put in, the commitment, and not only them, but their families also, and their friends. It's, it's just amazing to watch them in action. They are all inspiring and absolutely wonderful. So I thought I'd give you some highlights for me during the Olympics. So the highlights for me was the fact that we, this year, we had 22 golds, 21 silver and 22 bronze, a total of 65 medals. Not our biggest total, it's just slightly under our, our highest total, but again, what does it matter? It was absolutely amazing. So I really was hooked on Tom Daly and Matty Lee when they were doing their synchronised diving from the 10 metre board. I mean, 10 metres, do you see how high that is? Wow, absolutely amazing. And of course, Tom Daly did so well in the individual uh, of the 10 metre diving also. Max Whitlock, my goodness me, he is just amazing on that pommel horse. It is phenomenal. And he did. Going first, he put everything into it and of course came away with gold. Laura and Jason Kenny, they are amazing on these bikes. Absolutely amazing. Along, of course, Laura and Katie Archibald. Just absolutely fantastic. And of course, these bikes don't have brakes. And of course, everything in the Olympics uh, this year, you had to be able to buy commercially from the what they wore to their equipment, whatever it was, everything had to be commercially available to buy for anyone. So it was uh, Sir Chris Hoy who said when we were talking about the cycling, Oh, yes, he said, if you want one of these bikes, they're only £27,000. <laughs> that did make me smile. What about Duncan Scott, the swimmer? I mean, really? Four medals? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Laura Muir, didn't she do well? She really, she went all out and broke uh, the record. Just absolutely fantastic. And then near the end of the games, uh, I was watching the modern day pentathlon. I don't ever remember seeing it before. And uh, oh boy, am I hooked on that now, especially since we gold in both the men's and the women's. Uh, jo Chung and Kate French, they were amazing. Who would have thought a bike, a BMX bike, could do all these twirly, upside down, dangerous moves in the air? I mean, really, did you see them? They were fantastic. Um, who did we have? Oh, yeah, for the BMX, it was Charlotte Worthington and Beth Schriever. And then Tom, Pitt, Pitt, Tom Pitcock on the mountain bike. He just zoomed away from the field. And honestly, I, I, I'm just in awe of all of these athletes. There was the triathlon mixed team. There was the 4x100 mixed relay. The equestrians, now I don't like horse riding in any shape or form, you know, but the equestrian, the way they sat, the way they were dressed, the way they controlled the horses, amazing. And that is only some of the highlights that were for me in the Olympics. 
And I've even brought along my own gold medal. Look at that. Um, I don't know what I'd be given a gold medal for. Maybe talking? But there we go. I'll put my gold medal on. And then, of course, the pictures that we get nowadays are them all biting into their gold medals. Hey-ho. Um, but I've got my gold medal on. A kiddie woman, of course. So what highlights has there been this year? Well, let's be honest. Well, for me, again, this is all my viewpoints, uh, the vaccination rollout, it has been phenomenal, absolutely wonderful. The easing of the regulations, that's been a big highlight. Each step has been a highlight because it was getting back to a bit more normality. Meeting each other in cafes and restaurants to begin with. And now, of course, you can have as many people in your house as you wish. Now, even though I'm not a sports fan, the Euros were a big highlight for many, many people, especially the England football team and the England football supporters. Scotland, of course, got through, which was great, and we drew, we drew against England, but that was a huge, huge highlight for many, many people in the country. And of course, I've already mentioned the Olympics, but what else has come out as a highlight for me this year? It's the fact that the great community spirit of peeping help people helping one another has continued from last year's lockdown and continued into this year. There was a, an autistic team from Glasgow and he sent 663 cards to the NH staff at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary after hearing how hard that they had been working during this year so far. And then another highlight, I don't know if you caught it, um, but it was on, I think it was, it was certainly was online that I saw it. A French nun, her name was Lucille Randon. She was the oldest person in the world to recover from COVID at 117 years of age. And she came through COVID. Did you know for a highlight this year that China has now eliminated malaria from their country? Marcus Rashford, the footballer, his campaign for school meals continued on into this year and looks as though uh, it's going to continue even longer as well. Banksy, the painter, he sold a painting for £16 million, which he donated to NHS charities. Wonderful highlights, and you all have your own highlights that you remember from this year. But what about the highlights in our church this year? Because let's be honest, we've not been doing very much because of the lockdown from uh, December through to the end of March. And again, there's so many restrictions, we really couldn't be involved in very many aspects. However, here's some of my highlights from Eastern Old. We got back into worshipping in the building. And I know, you know, I'm going to mention about worshipping at home, but we got back into the building. And for me, that was a huge highlight. We had our online and telephone um, worship services and reflections continue and still continue. We were singing again, even though it was with masks on. Our clubs and organisations started to restart uh, slowly, but now gaining much more momentum. Phase two of our renovations were completed. We donated a substantial amount of food to Lawson Memorial's food project. We bought, through donations from yourselves, six laptops for Strathmore Primary School. We received funding to run our community fruit and vegetable garden project, which is at the back of our church, from Keep Scotland Beautiful. And then we received a great funding from Angus Council uh, via the Scottish Government for our summer trips and activities that we organised throughout the summer also. Now that's only the tip of the iceberg of the highlights, but we have done so much more, like still helping one another out, continuing to do what we can in any situation, but very much so for me, still getting the word of God out to people and putting our words into action through our missional work. And of course, especially the shop, the shop's open, it's doing well, and it has such a community of its own as well, and is a big part of Forfar. 
But by far the biggest highlight was getting back into the building to have our worship services. It really was. It was the biggest highlight for me in our church life. And I know people say, you know, we can worship at home and we can because that's why we do these videos and that's why we have our telephone line as well. But being in the company of others in the church building, it's being in company with one another, being in fellowship with one another. And we're all people of faith where we can listen for the word of God and try our best to hear it and understand it without distractions, because that whole time is set aside. But more so we can learn from one another and we can support one another as a community. Now, as I said, worshiping from home is great and where two or three are gathered in my name, you all know that, that saying. But worshiping is about worshiping in a community. It's worshiping together. So my hope and my prayer for this reflection today is that if you haven't managed back to church yet, the church building on a Sunday morning, or if you've only been once or only coming once a month, my hope and prayer is that you will continue now to keep coming each and every week to hear the word of God, to understand the word of God, and to put your words that you hear and you say into action. Have a great week, everyone. God bless.